Hey, 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 this is Pierre with the Code talking. So how do I present usually Teams to new users? This is the, the, the framework I'm using. So I'm going to share, I'm not going to show you how I demo Teams, but I'm going to show you how I introduce Teams. So first, so let's go first with um, a positioning. So I explained there are four main components the presence or status, which is not really a, a, a real component, but it's part, it's an important part of, of teams that you need to explain, especially in explain how this is working, how it's synchronized with Outlook and how you can change the status, how you can enhance the status. That's the first thing, there's the chat. Definitely that's one of the most used components. I guess a lot of people are chatting, it's better to chat than sending email for sure. Then there's a meeting and we all know that we're spending our days in meetings so you better understand how it works. There are some people who are struggling still, even people who are using Teams, they're struggling with some notions on how to, um, you know, who's the organizer, who's the presenter, what they can do, how, what is the experience on, for, for a guest, for an external user, and how to <laughs> how to uh, set up the noise suppression so you don't hear anything in the background. How do you put a background image? So, so that kind of thing. And all the features that are very interesting in, in Teams, especially the transcription, I think, and it's very important to understand how, it's, uh, how you can leverage that. And finally, the Teams for collaboration. So then I explain that the, you know, Teams is, is some, some people are saying it's the new operating system for collaboration. Uh, some other people are saying it's uh, the one-stop shop for the day-to-day -day work. It's true that in Teams you can do everything, almost. It's just email and even if you're a little bit tech savvy, you can embed email in Teams. Um, but all the rest you can do it in Teams. You can text, you can on the mobile, you can chat, of, of course, you can you can do what you were doing in previous maybe um, virtual meeting solutions. You can, I, I've, for example, I, I've met with customers, they didn't know that they can pull, um, they didn't know they can do whiteboard. You, you can do so many things that a lot of different tools are doing today and you can do it in one place. You can work on documents, you can share your notes, you can search for people, uh, see the org char chart, you can s survey as I said, you can uh, work with documents, co-author documents, there's so many things. I'm not going to make the list but this new, the, the old word is a silo experience with different tools. And the new world of Teams is one common experience in one tool. Even if you're using different components, it's still in one tool. So what are the benefits? I think the second thing is to explain uh, really quickly what are the main benefits. So I think the first one I talk about is, you know, one tool to do it all. Uh, then you can do really efficient virtual meetings and webinars. You can screen share, you can whiteboard, you can pull, you can record with transcription. That's just what I said. The, you know, just the meeting itself is really, really rich. Um, and obviously you can chat and not just with one person, but you can do a group chat. And, and while you're doing a group chat, you can share documents and co-author those documents with the people who are in the group chat. So you don't have to create a team if it's just working on documents for a sh short period of time. You can uh, manage your presence and it will be synced with, with Outlook. So if Outlook sees you're in meeting, it will say that you're in meeting. Um, there's other way the, the status will be changed automatically depending on your activities. You're sharing your screen, it will put you in do not disturb, stuff like that. Uh, and then I think the best thing in Teams is really the collaboration piece. So the collaboration is really to collaborate in, in context. So collaborating in context means 
uh, instead of having email, sending email on different subject, different project, everything is flat in your inbox and you're lost. Especially if you have a lot of projects, a lot of people in those projects, you, you lost here. You, uh, you have everything in context, it's already uh, sorted by channel, a channel that's where you're going to discuss about the project, that's where you're going to share the document, that's where you're going to co-author the document, you, they won't be in the inbox with different version. Everything is, will be in one place and you, you'll be able to work in context and you can have access to tabs that, you know, maybe you're going to have the notes for the, for the channel, all the meeting notes in the channel, you can record a meeting in, in a channel, etc, etc. So that's really what's transformative. Uh, so you really the, the the since I I use Teams and I can say I live in Teams, my my email uh, my email flow is really uh, almost uh, reduced to nothing. Uh, I'm just uh, you know receiving some emails because not everybody changed and is, and also sometimes when you receive external email then. That's probably the only exception, but you you don't need to to use email to communicate. Everything could be done in Teams. Even if, eventually, if you have Teams, you can now communicate with external people who are on, in Teams. Uh, and even if they're not in Teams, if you invite them to a team, you can discuss with them. So there's a lot of possibilities, uh, and to avoid to be in email jail. Uh, it, and Teams is really interconnected with all the components. You have connector with Outlook, you can send an email from Outlook to Teams. Um, you have connector with OneDrive, you can have access to your OneDrive from Teams. You don't have to go to uh, office.com to access to OneDrive. It's, everything is in, in Teams. All your files are in Teams, uh, wherever they're coming from. You can have access to different uh, applications like Planner, to manage your task, you have forms, you have tons of uh, applications that are available in Teams and you know more and more products are coming to Teams like Viva is coming to Teams like uh, you know there are so many so many new features that are developed uh, for Teams by default. Uh, it's and it's really I think the very compelling uh, feature is to be able to co-author in documents in Teams. So everything, since your documents are now in Teams, you open the document in Teams and you can open the document in Teams and you will have access to the document directly in Teams and you can have access to the document with, with all the people in the Teams. You can co-author those documents. It will manage the versioning. It will auto-save the document. You can open the document directly in Teams or you can open them in, in the Office app if, if you feel do you need have to have more features than in the teams and it will still keep the co-authoring you will be able to add common documents you will be able to to see what has been changed since you left the document uh, so it's really really powerful to see that you can work seamlessly with, with within document or different documents in a team in a channel uh, without any flaw so it's i think that's the more powerful thing but also uh, it, you don't have to manage the permission complexity in, in a team. Definitely the complexity of document is management of permission is, is coming from SharePoint. And then in Teams, Teams is a superset of SharePoint. So everything that you store, all the documents that you store in Teams, they are actually going in SharePoint. But people are not seeing it unless they are a little bit tech savvy expert. But you know the the whole idea is to bring the document in an easy way and where you're not struggling with permission because the the concept of team is to have open an open um, environment where the documents are stored and accessible by everybody and there are some some um, guidance to be provided when you deploy teams because since your every document is can be modified deleted by anybody from the team that means you need some education. Co-authoring, I talked about it. Versioning, I talked about it. Uh, and not, not only you can work in a team for, for collaboration uh, with internal users in uh, your coworkers, but you can also invite people uh, coming from outside. And when you're doing project with uh, partners, customers. 
that's pretty useful to be able to have access to for them to invite them to the team so they can collaborate too with the team. That's what I'm doing every time I try to invite the customer to a team uh, in Orton so they can collaborate on this team and, and we can better understand, they can better understand the experience of working in teams at the beginning of the project, but also it's more efficient than going back and forth through email and not following what's going on and, and being able not, not only to share documents, but also to discuss about those documents or whatever information you need to share. And finally, it's accessible any, anywhere, anytime, from any device. So you have access to everything. All those features from a mobile, from a PC, uh, a Mac, a web browser, a tablet. Uh, so it's really a seamless experience. So that's, you know, that's some sort of a dream where you can have access to all those features in one place. Um, but it needs some you know, transformation in how you work. So that that needs some education, some guidance, that's for sure. So usually uh, then I, I, when I present teams, I position, the first thing is I position teams to show how you were working tomorrow and what will be the path for the future. So this, this video, um, so, so I'm, I'm, um, I'm not gonna play it, but there's a video called um, Email Trees that shows that when you're using email, that's a nightmare because you know you send an email asking different people to work on something, and then the the, the email split in different threads, and and there are forward uh, C CCI, and and you know you, everybody is, has not the latest information. Uh, it's 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 just a mess. And in in this video, you you see that there's. Um, 61 email to make one decision and if you add to that you if you in email if you uh, share documents inside attached to the email that become even worse because then you have not only 61 email but maybe you're gonna have i don't know 10 version of documents and you might not know which one is the good, the, the the good one so i think it's key also before demonstrating anything before um introducing uh, how Teams is working is to uh, e explain the concepts. So the best way to explain the concept of Teams for collaboration is to give this analogy of it's it's like a house. So there are two kinds of uh, team. There's private team or public team. So uh, you can have an open house or, or your normal house. So private team, it, it's your normal house. Is You don't you just let people if you in if you invite them. Uh, open house, everybody. It's a public house. People can come and get into the team. So some some public uh, some 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 teams can can be public because uh, you want to be maybe transparent or you want people to join easily. You don't want to force them to come, so you make it public, but you don't invite everybody into the into the team into the house. Uh, that's my general recommendation: is to make by default all your teams public. But some 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 uh, teams you want to make them private, because you just want to uh, work closely with a set of people, especially when you have uh, some private information. Maybe not confidential. Confidential for sure. It has to be private. But if, even if it's not confidential, you just want to make it private. So you create a team. This is a house. Imagine this is a house. So then the people are coming in the house there are different rooms and rooms are channels. So that's a way to organize your work. You have different channels. One channel correspond to, uh, let's say to a topic, to if you're working on a project to a work stream, it's a subject. So what channel you organize by subject. Um, again, don't, you know, don't be Versailles. Don't, <laughs> don't, don't have, uh, a thousand of channels because pe people are going to be lost even uh, even a channel a, a thousand you cannot create a thousand channels. i don't remember the limit but uh, it's around 100 i guess but the yeah make make the work understandable it's a team uh, as you know team teams uh, the, the 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 word as a as a meaning it's for a team so a team of a thousand people doesn't mean anything uh, you can't create an org-wide team with everybody especially if you want to communicate 
uh, instantly to everybody you can do that but usually uh, that's what we don't see that um, deployed in a lot of organization because you know having a message that goes to all the employees through a pop-up chat that might not and all the answers that might be cumbersome so channels are like a room so there are two two kind of channel today there's a normal channel that we recommend a private channel private channel is just, if it's just like you lock your room and you can invite just a subset of people in, in the room and they can work with without being disturbed in this room um, we don't recommend private channel because private channel it's more management uh, somebody can be in a private channel without being the owner of the team so there's some issues there and you don't have all the features and the other features are the the, the appliance so in a, in a room do you have appliance uh, so uh, um, appliance are tabs called tabs in teams so it's you're adding tabs in your team so it's you're adding apps so, so you can add for example a website that you're using in this team that you don't want to switch to your browser to see the to see the app so you just show the the the, the tab for, for the for this website directly so people can see it directly without leaving teams without leaving the channel but you can add also documents you can add a one note that's what I use frequently all, with all the minutes of the, I mean, the all the notes for the project uh, but there's tons of tabs like planner like forms like you know you just investigate how, how many tabs you can how many apps are available to put in tabs so that's really the concept because when you understand the concept that you, when you're coming to a house you have access to all room and in a room you can see different appliance you'll better understand the concept of team channel and tabs i think it's another way to explain it um, will be to say if you compare that not to a house but to a building um, you know the the channels are some sort of meeting rooms meeting rooms where people join and work together on a subject um, and that's where the, the job is done so you can also compare that to a building with uh, with channels that are meeting rooms and if you want to explain um, a little li little bit more uh, what's behind the scene because some people are you know uh, asking technical questions as I said behind the team there's a SharePoint site so when you create a team you create a SharePoint site when you create a channel so when you create a SharePoint site there's what we call a document library where you store all your documents so in this document library there is a one folder by default which is a default channel which is created all the time called general can be cannot be changed cannot be renamed can not be deleted so this um, this uh, document library has a general folder under it and every time you create a channel it creates a new folder except for private team where it's going to create a total different teams because for management permission SharePoint it's very complex so it creates a, another another SharePoint site so that when you you do this intro of teams then you you do the demo you do the demonstration so depending on what you want to demo um, if you want to focus on it can be very long um, but if you want to focus on chat and meeting first uh, definitely I will segment in two, two demonstration chat and meeting uh, might take some time and also uh, teams for collaboration that that takes a chunk of time and you can you can spend three hours explaining that so but I think when you talk about collaboration focus on first discovering the user interface first thing to know is how you manage your notification what means activities so people can understand where the activities are and what's what is happening in the activities the search is important especially after some experience in teams people might uh, struggle to find information when they have a lot of teams um, uh, if you were dealing with people who are going to create teams you need to explain the process of creating a team maybe some guidance teams of conduct some concept like everything every time i remind people that when you post a message in a team i mention at least one person just to be sure somebody's going to see it 
Um, don't over out mention people neither like to mention that you read the the post that's a convention uh, re remind to the people who are new to teams that all the documents are, are visible to everybody even if they're in other channels uh, on the exception of private channel and and explain that uh, you all have the same permission almost the owner has uh, more more uh, power but not in terms of permission or on documents so everybody can modify delete a document so when somebody's opening a document just to view it it's in ed edit mode and if it's if he say if he stays in the document for a period of time even if it doesn't do any change it will save the document with his name so the last person who will modify the document will be him or her so you need to educate around that so you can do some education for the team's owner but also mostly you want to explain teams for the end users to explain you know the concept of channel then how to you post an, uh, a post uh, explain how it works explain uh, that you can expand the the post box i don't know what you call it where you type your message so you avoid when you press enter to send the message uh, show how you can format a message so you can attach a document so uh, you can upload a document in your teams so show the file tab where you see all the documents stored um, and um, explain you know how you come back on the post and the three little dots just to explain that you can edit the post you can link get the link to the post you can share the post to outlook if people are not responding to the post you can you can send them the the post in Outlook, stuff like that. So I think that's important to for them to understand what you can do, and also you show the UI uh, in in a, in a channel that you can see. Clicking a little eye on top of the screen that you can see all the members, you can see pin post and stuff like that. Um, go around a little bit and finish with an experience. So create a document I recommend usually to create a, a channel dedicated for demonstration I call sandbox channel where people can try uh, teams for the first time without putting all the other channels just to play create a document there uh, and ask them to open the document and work together in this document so they can feel what it is because it's really real time it's not you know it's real time you see what people are typing where they're typing you see a name uh, it's really powerful you can show the ad comment also uh, so that experience where people are going to collaborate on document it's really powerful to demonstrate there are all the features you could demonstrate uh, but for the first introduction i will say uh, you know present the concept of teams demonstrate the basic of teams uh, for collaboration uh, the post the announcement uh, um, the how you edit a post, how you attach a document, but and I'll finish with co-authoring a document. And eventually you can show how to create tabs uh, and add maybe website, their website, uh, so they can see it's easy to enhance. That's my, my tip um, when I introduce uh, Teams and you don't have much time, Teams for a new user, start with this deck and then uh, do a short demo on where it's important. I think the most important to understand the, the, the concept that has to be underst understood is definitely Teams for Collaboration. Hope this was helpful.